The second book of Kings, chapter 18. Hezekiah, king of Judah. In the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made. For up to that time, the Israelites had been burning incense to it. It was called Nehushtan. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, in the, uh, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following him. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses, and the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. From watchtower to fortified city, he defeated the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory. <clears throat> the king of Hezekiah, the king Hezekiah's fourth year, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, marched against Samaria and laid siege to it. At the end of three years, the Assyrians took it, so <clears throat> Samaria was captured in Hezekiah's sixth year, which was the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel. The king of Assyria deported Israel to Assyria and settled them in Hala, in Gozan, on the Habor River, and in towns of the Medes. This happened because they did not, had not obeyed the Lord and their God, but had violated his covenant, all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded. They neither listened to the commands nor carried them out. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, Sennacherib king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. So Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent this message to the king of Assyria at Lachish, Lachish. I have done wrong. Withdraw from me, and I will pay whatever you demand of me. The king of Assyria exacted from Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the temple of the Lord, and in the treasuries of the royal place, palace. At this time, Hezekiah, king of Judah, stripped off the gold with which he had covered the doors and the doorposts of the temple of the Lord and gave it to the king of Assyria. Sennacherib threatens Jerusalem. The king of Assyria sent his supreme commander, his chief officer, and his field commander with a large army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. They came up to Jerusalem and stepped, uh, stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pole on the road to the washerman's field. They called for the king and Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, son of Asa, the recorder, went out to them. <clears throat> the field commander said to them, Tell Hezekiah, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria, says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have the counsel and the might for war, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending that you rebel against me? Look, I know you are depending on Egypt, that splintered reed or a staff, which pierces the hand of anyone who leans on. 
it, such as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who depend on him. But if you say to me, we are depending on the Lord our God, isn't he the one whose high places and altars Hezekiah removed, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Come now, make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses if you can put riders on them. How can you repulse one officer of the least of my master's officials, even though you are depending on Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Furthermore, I come to attack and destroy this place without word from the Lord. The Lord himself told me to march against this country and destroy it. The Eliakim son of Hilkiah and Shimna and Joah said to the field commander, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic since we understand it. Don't speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people on the wall. But the commander replied, Was it only you, to your master and you that my master sent me to say these things, and not to the people sitting on the wall, who like you will have to eat their own excrement and drink their own urine? Then the commander stood and called out in Hebrew, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you from my hand. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord. When he says, The Lord will surely deliver us, this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. This is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me. Then each of you will eat fruit from your own vine and fig tree and drink water from your own cistern until I come and take you to a land like your own, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vine vineyards. A land of olive trees and honey. Choose life and not death. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for he is misleading you when he says, The Lord will deliver us. Has the God of any nation ever delivered his land from the hand of a king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharim, Sepharvaim, Hina and Eva? Have they rescued Samaria from my hand? Who of all the gods of these countries has been able to save his land from me? How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But the people remained silent and said nothing in reply, because the king had commanded, Do not answer him. Then Eliakim, son of Hilakiah, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, went to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him what the field commander had said. Chapter 19 Jerusalem's deliverance foretold. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shibna, the secretary, and the lead, leading priests, all wearing sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz. They told him, This is what Hezekiah says. This day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, as when children come to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God, and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. 
when King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master, <clears throat> this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words with which the underli uh, underlines of the kings of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country, and there I will have him cut down with the sword. When the field commander heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. Now Sennacherib received a report that Terka, Terhaka, the king of Cush, was marching out to fight against him. So he again sent messengers to Hezekiah with the word, Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God uh, you depend on deceive you when he says Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Surely you have heard that the king of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. And will you be delivered? The, did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Haran, Rezef and the people of Aden, who were in Tel Asar. Where is the king of Hamath or the king of Arpa Arpad? Where are the kings of Lyre, Sepharvim, Hena, and Eva? Hezekiah's prayer. Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heavens and heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the king, living God. It is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste these nations and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them. For they were not gods, but only wood and stone, fashioned by human hands. Now, Lord our God, deliver us from this, his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. Isaiah prophesies Sennacherib's fall. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, Amos sent, a messenger, uh, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I have heard your prayer concerning Sennacherib, king of Assyria. This is the word that the Lord has spoken against him. Virgin daughter Zion despises you and mocks you. Daughter Jerusalem tosses her head as you flee. Who is it you have ridiculed and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted your eyes in pride? Against the Holy One of Israel, by your messenger, messengers, you have ridiculed the Lord. And you have said, with my many chariots, I have ascended the heights of the mountains, the utmost heights of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars, the choicest of its junipers. I have reached its remotest parts, the finest of its fort forests. I have dug wells in foreign lands and drunk the water he there. With the soles of my feet, I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Long ago I ordained it. In days of old, I planned it. Now I have brought it to pass that you have turned the fortified cities into piles of stone. Their people drained of power, are dismayed, and put to shame. 
They are like plants in the field, like tender green shoots, like grass sprouting on the roof, scorched before it grows up. So, but I know there you are, and when you come and go, and how you rage against me, because you rage against me, and because your insolence has reached my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and I will make you return by the way you came. This, is, this will be the sign for you, Hezekiah. This year you will eat what grows by itself, and the second year that springs from that. But in the third year sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more a remnant of the kingdom of Judah will take root before and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow here. He will not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, he will return. He will not enter the city, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. The night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. One day, while he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons Adramelech and Sharezer killed him with the sword, and they escaped to the land of Ararat, and Esarachadon, his son, succeeded him as king. Amen.